Are you looking for some epic indoor entertainment in Branson, Missouri? We're gonna talk about escape code right now. with TPF, Trips, Places, and Fun. And this is John, and at TPF we talk about fun and exciting, family-friendly adventures. That's right, and we'd like to talk about one of those right now, and that happens to be one that we own called Escape Code. Yeah, and so escape rooms are booming and exploding really all over the world, and we've been involved in this for several years now. We're having the time of our lives. It's an absolute blast. In fact, Amy and I have played probably over 300 yeah. escape rooms all over the nation. So let me tell you, once you play, it gets in your blood. I hear about that all the time. People play once and they just can't stop. They can't stop. So what is an escape room? Maybe at least some of you have tried them, but maybe some of you have never done it before and you're wondering, what is it exactly? Is it scary? What if I'm claustrophobic? What about those sorts of things? Those are really important questions and because a lot of people will immediately dismiss escape rooms because they think they're scary, they think they're another version of haunted houses, or that they're claustrophobic because they presume that they're locked in a room and they can't get out. Not the case at all, especially at escape code. Now, some escape rooms do have a, f a fear factor, right? Some of them do, but we have, I would say, an intrigue factor or there's some mystery involved, but no jump scares, no gore. So you wouldn't, mm. it's not like a haunted house in that way. It is all about, you know, progressing through a story as you solve puzzles and find codes and decipher hints that have been left in the game. And so that's what it's all about. It's super fun. And it's about being put into an immersive environment where you become part of the story. Yeah, it's way better than going to the movies because like you said, you are a part of the story. For an hour, you are, you're immersed, you're in that environment. You're finding codes and clues. You're solving puzzles, riddles. Uh, and I'm telling you, it's convincing, it's exciting, and it completely takes you out of kind of the real world that we all live in. And for 60 minutes, you get to be a part of something much different and bigger than yourself. So actually, one of our reviews says that it was like being in a movie. Right, So yeah. instead of watching the movie, it's about being part of the adventure. And so kind of the way that we do it is we put people into an immersive environment and they have 60 minutes to try to solve the mystery that's associated with the game and find the escape code and escape in time in order to win. Right. And so we have five different games or five different rooms that you can choose from. We're going to briefly go over each one of these. And, you know, if you're coming to Branson at any time in the near or distant future, definitely consider escape code. But if you're not in Branson, find an escape room where you are. They're all over the place, especially in larger cities and tourist, des uh, tourist destinations. Uh, but for escape code, Let's kick off with the guest house. Why don't you talk about the guest house? This is one of our most popular rooms, very family friendly. Yes, and the guest house is one of the original games that we started with back in 2015. Mm -hmm. And so it has been around for a while, but we keep it because it is a fan favorite, still super popular. So in the guest house, you are staying in a little cottage, a cute little cottage and you're trying to solve a mystery. The previous tenant has disappeared and you're trying to figure out what happened to the previous tenant in 60 minutes before it happens to you. Right, so you, uh, in the guest house, it is, it's a cute little co cottage, it's adorable, and Amy put her flair into that room, right? Wouldn't you say? And I guess so, if, 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 I, if cute and adorable describes me, then I guess I did. There you have it, and there's some flowers in there, and but uh, I'll tell you what, it's not just for the ladies. This is a this is a gritty mystery. Yes, and so there's a lot of intrigue involved. What exactly happened to that previous tenant, and can you get out in time? That's right. So the guest house is a great option. Number two is one of my favorites. You know, people ask all the time, what's your favorite? I like all of our games, and we wouldn't have a game if I didn't really love it. But if I had to choose, I would probably choose Revenge. So Revenge is the, as or an, a, can't say it. Revenge is an abduction scenario. Yes. And so you actually start out this game blindfolded and handcuffed. 
And so people either think that's super cool or they think, oh, I could never do that. But it really adds to the immersion in this game. So you go into the room with blindfolds on, not knowing what you're going to see when you open your eyes. Right. So that there's just kind of this extra element of mystery and surprise there. Right. And, you know, people ask, you know, well, how long are we in the handcuffs? Well, first of all, you take the blindfolds off right at the beginning of the game. The handcuffs, you're in the handcuffs for the first part of the game. It uh, just depends on how long it takes you to find the keys. Figure out the first puzzle in order and to, to get, get out. out of the handcuffs. Right. But when people think about, again, the claustrophobia thing, uh, you are you can leave the room at any time. The mag or the handcuffs are attached by magnets. They'll come off the wall very easily, and you can cruise on out of the room. So in case of an emergency, there's always a way out. Or if you you know just feel overwhelmed and you feel like you needed to leave, you could. I don't yeah. know that we've ever had that happen. Though. I don't think we ever have. So claustrophobia to date has not been much of an issue at all, really. So revenge, you are trying to prove your innocence to your captor. Right. He's putting you kind of through a series of tests and you are trying to, you know, complete these tests and ultimately prove your innocence and escape your captor. Yeah, so, because he's actually captured another group and has them in a basement across town. Yes. He's going to let one of those groups go. So he's go. kind of making you compete against one another, I guess is how you could say it. But this is a very interesting room because it does have that element of you know, moral decision and kind of how's it going to play out and that sort of thing. And so it's mm -hmm. very intriguing. And the urgency in the room is pretty intense because it's, there's a lot to do. It's our hardest room. So only what, 15 to 20% mm -hmm. get out. And, but don't let that stop you because it is so much fun, whether you live, live, live. <laughs> I didn't mean live. We have not had any fatalities in this game. Whether you win, Whether you win or, lose. or lose. That's what I meant to say. And uh, so don't don't don't, don't be don't be concerned. Uh, you will get out one way or another. So revenge yes. is a it's a thriller for sure. All right, and number three is my favorite of our game. I love it too. And this is Vortex. This is our tor tornado experience. And so you are trying to escape a tornado that is um, barreling down upon you, and you're trying to break into the storm cellar of a par paranoid survivalist. You just so happen to be at the home of a paranoid survivalist. Right as the tornado is coming, what luck. What luck. <laughs> and he has but, a storm shelter and everything. Yes, he has a storm shelter, but, he but locks you, have it down. To, you have to break into it, though. Mm -hmm. So you have 60 minutes to break into the storm shelter and call for help or you will not survive, you know, this storm of the century. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, themed to uh, to look like there's there's storms and there's lightning and thunder and the tornadoes coming. And uh, yeah, it's it's really exciting. There's all sorts of twists and turns and different different, you know cubbies and things that you're trying to get into in a closet and just different things and it's just there's a lot of surprises yes so that's a great game just because there's just something around every corner around every single around corner every including corner. a tornado yes next all right number four is the great escape of jasper jinx this is and our newest game yes it is a western themed game so those of you who kind of like that Old West scenario, you are deputies and you are trying to track down Jasper Jinx. He has escaped. And he's a bad, bad dude. He's a bandit, right? And so you're trying to track him down and um, find the gold that he has hidden and foil his plans. Yes. So, yes. This foil is a, his plans. Foil his plans. This is a great room for families. Um, it's very uh, kid friendly. Yeah. All of our games are somewhat kid friendly, except for maybe Revenge. I would say is probably the least kid friendly because that there is that abduction scenario. But Jasper Jinx just kind of has that fun, like be a deputy, go get the bad bandit. Yeah, and all in all of our games, you know, even Revenge, there there's really you know we have kids, we we'll have moms carrying babies in slings and. You know, grandma and grandpa and all all ages. Yeah, that's true. They All ages can um, Although play Although revenge them. is tougher, I agree. Right, and we do have recommendations on our website of, you know, the elements in each game that could be scary for children. So it's just going to depend on your child. Um, a couple of our games have thunder and lightning effects or start off in the dark or, like revenge, start off um, blindfolded and handcuffed. But... 
because Jasper Jinx has none of that, it mm -hmm. starts off in the light. It has no handcuffs. It has no thunder and lightning. That tends to be the best one for kids. And it's one of our easier games, I guess, right? Yeah, it's a little bit easier. Um, so Revenge is our hardest. Vortex is our second hardest. And all the others are kind of at the same level. Right. So Jasper Jinx, great game. Number next, whatever. Number five, number five. the last one, number five. <laughs> is our Bible adventure. And this is the imprisonment of F Paul and Silas. It's called Condemned. Did I say that already? I don't know if I said its title. It's I don't called think Condemned. you did. And so you are following the Bible story of Paul and Silas in an ancient dungeon in Philippi. Yeah. So it's it's, it's our biggest game. Mm -hmm. And you get to progress through a lot of different rooms and um, different areas in this game. So it's pretty cool because you're going from, you know, you're starting out in a dungeon, you're going into a guard shack, and it's pretty cool to see the way that it progresses. And also to get that Bible story, to kind of live that Bible story. And you don't have to have previous Bible knowledge to Not complete a bit. this game. Everything that you need to win the game is inside the room. So if you know nothing about the imprisonment of Paul and Silas, you could still play this game and Definitely. beat it. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool to see it, you know, come to life. Yeah, I love Condemned. It's it's really it's really an exciting game. That one does start out in the dark, and there's thunder and lightning, and super cool. All right, so those are our five escape games. But don't don't check out yet because we're going to talk about Sagas, which is really fun. So Sagas is kind of a mesh between escape games and murder mystery. Mm -hmm. So. In Sagas, we have live actors. We actually actually utilize some of our escape games and the different scenarios there. And we send teams into the games to interact with the live actors and pick up clues and gather pieces of evidence, which they then put into an evidence room and have to put it all together and solve the mystery at the end. Yeah, so, so a lot of murder mysteries are campy or silly or funny. Uh, can, uh, sagas is, is not. I mean, it's... Uh, more, uh, I don't know if I want to use this word serious. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of laughs and things, but it's it's more real, I guess, or a little more intense. Yeah, it's def you're definitely feeling like you're a real detective trying to solve this mystery, and so there are some very real aspects to it. Although it is fun. Oh yeah. But um, it's not, yeah, it's not slapstick or anything like no. that. It's definitely a very unique experience because it is, it is a compilation of escape rooms and murder mystery. Right. And so that's pretty unique. And this is a large group um, attraction. And so at least 25 people are required. Now we are working on something and it's going to take a little bit of time, but we are working on another uh another saga, another story of sagas that will be for smaller groups, more like an escape room. But uh, we are still working on it. Yes, so hopefully um, within the year, we will have a sagas adventure that will be available to groups of all sizes. So right. keep an eye out for that. So, but definitely check out sagas. All right. And before we check out, we got to talk about just briefly the Axe game. It's uh, another business that is right there next door to Escape Code and Sagas. And so it's kind of set up like bowling. Um, you are not throwing hatchets at your spouse or your teammates. You're throwing hatchets at targets. What made so, you say that? Well, because people think that that well, sometimes they don't know and sometimes they're worried. But I it's, am now worried. <laughs> it's set up like bowling and there's fenced lanes and at the end of the lane is a target and you have a coach that helps you out that gives you the safety rules and walks you through some games and throws you or throws you. <laughs> I am so c concerned now. You're throwing hatchets or you're throwing me? Your coach throws you. No. Is, is no. there anything you want to talk about? <laughs> Your coach teaches you how to throw axes at targets. Mm. So, yes, that's how it works. <laughs> Good to hear that. And so t check out the axe game by all means. How old do you have to be? Yes, so this is for people eight years and older. Right. And also that does require a reservation mm -hmm. at theaxegame.com and it requires a minimum of four people. That's right. And if you have others in your party that just want to hang out and watch, they can do that. Or even uh, children under the age of eight, as long as there's someone there to watch them, they can hang out there. They just can't throw. But uh, it's a lot of fun. It's probably way more fun than even maybe in your brain you're thinking. It's like throwing an ax. No, I'm telling you, especially as you get a larger group, 
crazy fun. Yeah, so come check all of that out, um, especially if you're looking for indoor attractions. You know, maybe it's snowy or rainy or who knows what. Come check it out and give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified of future videos. And yes. Safe travels, everyone. Safe travels to Branson, Missouri, and Escape Code. And Sagas. And the Axe Game. <laughs>
His accomplices are hot on your heels and will arrive within 60 minutes, guns blazing. Follow the clues to uncover his scheme and find the goal before it's too late. Condemned and beaten, Paul and Silas were cast into a Roman prison. You have followed them into the dungeon depths, where your plight rests in the hands of a sympathetic guard, or perhaps someone greater. While Paul and Silas have made their escape, your future is uncertain. You will know you've won the game when the light above the door turns from red to green. The path to freedom may be different than expected. Can you find it before it's too late?